Guess who forgot that the Rat Slayer was a weapon? So, if you have watched most of my Fallout videos, you have probably come to notice that I tend to solve most of my in-game problems by just charging at them head-on, usually with a sledgehammer or other blunt instrument. Yet, despite that aggressive playstyle, I am actually quite a big fan of stealth games. Which, come to think of it, should also be rather obvious. Well, I figured today we could get the most out of the sneak skill as I find out, can you beat Fallout New Vegas while hidden? While sneaking? While stealthing? Honestly, I was jumping around what to call this video for a very long time. Basically, the rules I came up with are that I can only move while sneaking, I will need to stand up occasionally to talk to people, but other than that, I will be working on my hunchback for the rest of the run. I can also only attack people while I am in the hidden or caution states. Hidden is self-explanatory, nobody knows where you are, whereas caution means people are actively looking for you, even if they don't know your current whereabouts. If I am spotted by an enemy, this will be indicated by the game changing to the danger state. When this happens, I may have a couple of options depending on the scenario. If I am in an open enough area, I may be able to sneak out of sight and once again lose sight of them, bringing them back to the caution state or even hidden, which will then allow me to attack once more. In some scenarios, I may just need to find the nearest exit and leave. For example, when going to take out house, I highly doubt I'll be able to take out slash get by all of the Securetrons, so I may just need to quickly crouch walk past them while taking fire until I can get to the elevator. If the situation doesn't present an opportunity to leave or sneak away, and it also happens to be a mandatory encounter, then I will need to reload my most recent save, as I will essentially be trapped with no way to fight back. I had considered making this like a European extreme run of the Metal Gear games, where whenever you're spotted you're forced to reload. But I figured it would be more interesting if I could actually make the most out of my skills and use it to try and sneak away in the rare instances where I'm actually spotted. Oh, and one more bonus rule just for me, I have to follow the intended path up from Good Springs through Prim to Novak and then Vegas. Simply figured this would be more interesting than going through the Black Mountain shortcut as we all know how easy it is to sneak through there. Now with all that out of the way, let's begin. Appropriate name and attempted yet quick character model aside, let's get to my specials. Agility and luck were pushed to 9 for the greatest number of points I could get into sneak right off the bat. Endurance shouldn't be too important as the goal is to not be spotted, so I lower it to 3. Charisma as always is worthless outside of some companion based perks, as leveling up and putting points into its stats is just as good as increasing the base special. Intelligence and perception are just average as they both seem decent to make use of, but not enough for me to worry about maxing them out. And finally, strength was at 7, simply because I figured I might need the anti-material rifle for the Battle of the Dam, and as it has a strength requirement of 8, if I keep it at 7 now, I can get the last point either from intense training or an implant. For my tag skills I go with sneak, guns and barter. All of those should be pretty obvious as to why. You could argue repair would be more useful than barter, but with my luck being at 9, if I ever need a lot of money to repair my gear, I can take 10 minutes out of my day to engage in some daylight robbery of the casinos. Finally for traits, I went with skilled and trigger discipline. Skilled is the best trait and you should always take it, and I figured this may be the one and only run where trigger discipline may actually prove useful with its added accuracy. Alright, so first things first, if I want to actually take out people reliably without making my presence known right away, I will need a suppressed weapon. Fortunately, Chet right here in Good Springs always seems to have plenty of Silence 22 pistols in stock, along with a good amount of ammo. I continue crawling around the town and help Sunny deal with the local bottle menace, she also gives me the varmint rifle, normally a very unimpressive weapon, but for today, this just may be the greatest weapon to grace my hands. You'll see why later. Normally I would just launch Cobb's head from his shoulders the instant I re-enter the saloon, but as of right now there are way too many witnesses, even if they're all for the idea. It's not a major issue as I can just slowly follow him down to this building he leans on, and after making sure I'm just out of sight but also still have a clear shot on him, plant one on his head, which is enough to kill him. The 22 pistol is pretty good from stealth due to getting bonus crit damage, so for now it will be my best weapon, or at least until I find a suppressor for the varmint rifle. I get the usual help for Ringo around town, by which I mean everyone bar easy Pete, and then watch the fight from a distance. This wasn't entirely intentional mind you. I was of course trying to stay out of sight so I could attack, but due to my slower than normal movement speed, what with me being crouched the entire time, the fight is mostly over before I even get there. I won't harp on too much about my reduced pace this run, simply because I already beat the game while being over encumbered before, which was far worse. So this really doesn't bother me all that much. 
With the quest complete and nothing left for me in town, I went into the saloon and continued to get the most out of my pistol by headshotting most of the townsfolk and Ringo for a little extra XP. As I am doing it from stealth, I don't lose reputation and I don't alert anybody so there are no repercussions. You may have also noticed that I am apparently still in the caution phase. Well, unfortunately, New Vegas being New Vegas, that's just a visual bug. It's easily fixed by completely restarting the game. I have to do it a few times in the run to be honest, so just know if there looks like a part of the footage where I'm moving and it says caution, yet there is nobody nearby, this is why. I make sure to grab the snow globe before I leave along with a powder ganger disguise. Disguises could come in very handy today, so I should probably try and get as many as I can. I put said disguise to good use right away as I can use it to sneak past these powder gangers and get myself into a position where I can very easily stealth kill the both of them without alerting the others nearby. Speaking of the other two at the makeshift camp, they get to die in each other's arms, so that's a nice and a horrible kind of way. When I make it to Prim, I grab an NCR uniform for much later, and then make my way into the town to see about rescuing Beagle. Going round the left hand side of the town near the sheriff's house allows me to very easily dispatch the first convict with no hassle. His friend nearly spots me, but due to him not having any object permanence, he seems to completely forget about my existence the instant I'm out of his sight. I checked with Johnson Nash for mods for the rifle, he had none, so I then proceeded to take out my frustrations on the convicts inside of the hotel. They are all still very easy one shots due to them being low level and having jack all in the way of armour. The only ones that prove a bit of a hassle are the convict leader as he has leather armour and a helmet and one of his friends in the very same room. It was a lot of taking a shot and then retreating down the normally locked corridor where Beagle will leave from after you rescue him. The three of us basically just kept going in circles over and over. I would shoot, they would investigate, I'd retreat to leave caution, and then just rinse and repeat. To be fair, this probably only worked because I managed to hit level 3 and was able to funnel even more points into sneak, making things just a little bit easier. Once the way is cleared, I leave and thanks to pill popping power can program Prim Slim to protect the town. The Mojave Outpost was next on my list of places to visit, mainly for Major Knight and his repair skill. On the way I put the varmint rifle to good use as I sniped a couple of convicts from a distance outside of the pistol's effective range. Sure, it may not have a suppressor on it just yet, but at this distance and with my sneak skill, I should be fine so long as I can take them out before they begin to investigate properly. I know there are two jackal gang members lying in wait on the far side of this building, so I take a wide berth around to get the jump on them instead. The lower leveled member I'm able to take out first from quite a distance. The way Sneak works in this game kinda doesn't make any sense, as even though he dies right next to his boss, she doesn't react to him due to me using his silencer. I'm not gonna complain mind you, it makes my life a lot easier. Anyway, as for her, well, seeing how she is fixating on the road, I'm able to swing around and get right up behind her without her noticing, and then put her down just as easy as all the rest. I thought that maybe I could take on the rad scorpions at the rest stop, as after all, the small one went down easy enough with the varmint rifle. Unfortunately, the big ones were not so keen on the idea and began chasing me, putting me in the danger status. I was going to slip away and just come back later before I remembered that some travelling merchants should be nearby. With that in mind, I led them over and they were more than a match for the scorpions and thanks to me doing some of the damage to them, I was even able to get a little bit of experience which was just enough for me to reach level 4 and already attain a sneak skill of 88, meaning on my next level up I will max out the stat and can focus on guns. I get quests from Rangers Jackson and Ghost while at the outpost, and due to my sneak skill being so high, I even get the unique opening dialogue with Ghost for sneaking up on her. I assume dealing with the ants for Jackson would have been more of a hassle, but it was honestly pretty straightforward with the varmint rifle. So long as I stayed as far away as possible for the rifle to still be useful, then I could take them out before they clocked onto my position. Knowing that I could slay ants with zero consequences, I decided to cross the desert to Nipton by heading straight through their home. In my mind it was a lot easier than dealing with a horde of vipers on the road near the destroyed building. And I was right, I was even able to use vats for some more accurate headshots while at long range. It also gave me a good warning for an incoming jump scare which was certainly appreciated. I am inevitable. After our forced talk I put down the devil once his back is turned with one well placed shot. I then steal his clothes for good measure. I repeat this exact same process when not two minutes later Thomas does the exact same thing. People should really learn not to turn their back on the crazy hunched over guy slowly inching his way across the Mojave. My violent streak doesn't stop there, in fact it has only begun. This is because I give the same greeting to Oliver Swanick, followed very shortly thereafter by Volpe's and the Fox Pack. The mongrels, and I mean the actual dogs, go down in one shot anywhere on the body, whereas the recruits need to be couriered to achieve the same result. I take the head on his head as a reward for my head and have some more fun with some nearby legion. 
Again, getting all these kills from stealth means my rep is never lowered with the Legion, so the ones at the camp are not hostile towards me, and even after killing them and releasing their would-be slaves, I remain at a steady neutral in Caesar's eyes. It was mostly danger-free from here to Novak. Well, there were a couple of other encounters on the way, but let's be real, as fun as it may have been, no one wants to hear about my struggles with every small raider group or bloat fly along the way. I check out Cliff's shop in Novak, and then I'm immediately disappointed by what he has on sale, and as a result, abuse Manny so that I may get his hunting rifle. The hunting rifle does not have the option to get a suppressor at any point, but seeing how the varmint rifle is also doing work for me while still being loud as hell, I figured it couldn't hurt to take this out for a spin. Plus, I grabbed a ton of ammo for it back in the sheriff's house in Prim, so I may as well get some use out of it. Before putting it to the test on the vipers outside of town, I noticed this odd glitch where I believe I am briefly looking inside my own head while zooming in without a weapon. This only happened when I was wearing the Brahmin skin outfit for what it's worth, and it stopped as soon as I pulled out any weapon. Truly, I discover something new every single playthrough. Anyway, putting the gun to work and as you might expect, it kills them all in one go. Probably comes as no surprise. I made sure to take out the leader in the reinforced armour first, just to guarantee the stealth critical. I continued to get the most out of the gun by wiping out all of the ants in the dry lake just next to Helios 1. This is slowly becoming one of those things I just do in every playthrough. It's worth a decent amount of XP, sure, but I can't explain it, it's just really fun to kill ants in New Vegas. Does that make me a monster? Perhaps, but who cares, I've already marked a substation on the map, so yay for me. I am kinda planning to do a Yes Man run today but also kind of not. You'll see what I'm planning later. On the bright side, before heading down to Boulder City, I do make a detour to the 188 trading post and manage to get not only a silencer, but also a scope for the varmint rifle, so now the weapon will actually be substantially better than before. When I get to Boulder City, I could have probably just said I would negotiate with the can so I could just run in and stealth kill Jessup, but instead I offered to sneak in and free the troopers so that the NCR could wipe out the cans instead. Doing so, I managed to get in two good shots before it flipped to danger. I didn't manage to kill anyone, but again, that's not an issue, as that's what the NCR is here for, to clean up my mistakes. Jessup and the other can are still indoors, and I'm just going to let this play out for you so you can see these games in all their glory. Anybody there? Anybody there? Jessup may have taken the hit and spot of me, but thankfully he is keen enough to follow me outside, where the troopers have their fun wiping out the last of the cans in the area. I make sure to grab Benny's lighter, and more importantly, Jessup's bandana. It just goes right with the build. Before making my way for Vegas, I head back into the room where we found Jessup, and grab the single turbo that's lying on the floor. Call it a hunch, but I think I could use this when it comes to getting into Nellis, lest we really do want a repeat of the over-encumbered video. If I am preparing to be hit with countless artillery strikes, then I may as well stock up on stim packs as well. But rather than go and buy them like a normal person, I instead head over to the follower's outpost that is secretly bigger on the inside, and start positioning myself around the room like an overly aggressive photographer as I need to find just the right area for the perfect shot. I'm doing this because each of the doctors drops three stim packs, one super stim pack, and a doctor's bag, which should honestly be more than enough to see me through, possibly to the end of the run, honestly. Again, realistically, I shouldn't need any healing supplies outside of the boomer's bombardment. I say I don't need healing supplies, yet here I am, mindlessly murdering entire lines of bighorners for their meat. And you know what's worse? This isn't even the only time I do this in the run. Last stop before Vegas was naturally the Gunrunners, however, even if I were to sell everything I owned, I wouldn't be able to buy the anti-material rifle, not that that would be a good idea. Something I should mention is that while the anti-material rifle does in fact have a suppressor mod, it doesn't make it completely silent like the 22 pistol or varmint rifle. Rather, it does just lower the sound. This means that using it in close quarters, like I have been doing with the other guns, would still cause me to be spotted. It will still be very good for using it long range, however, and its explosive rounds can make dealing with small groups of enemies laughable. I did try searching around all the vendors here, including Blake of the Crimson Caravan, as well as the Van Graffs, and I was never able to find a scope for my hunting rifle, and spoiler alert, I never did. 
That's a little heads up, as you will start to see me using the hunting rifle less and less from this point on. Oh well, it served me well killing those ants, I suppose. Sorry Manny, you basically died for nothing. I continue to have some fun with the varmint rifle by sniping random and unsuspecting people around the town, from unnamed locals to Oris, and that guy who may or may not be selling people to people. Around here I kind of realised there was nothing I needed to do in Freeside, so I ended up just gambling for a bit while I figured out what to do next. I got just over 5,000 caps, which now puts me in the range of the anti-material rifle, but even though its suppressor doesn't completely nullify the noise, I still think it is required before I use it, otherwise I may as well just be screaming at people to return fire. For once in my life, I made use of Mr. Holdout by buying a bunch of 22 pistols to keep my own in good shape. With nothing to lose, I entered the tops. As I had went the normal route like a new player, I had all of the evidence to convince Swank to send Benny up to his room, where I could very quietly assassinate him. While that sounds all well and good for a stealth build, I had a better idea. Trying to remain undetected and go about your business alerting as little people as possible and full scale murder of every casino on the strip is not something you would think would go hand in hand together, but apparently you would be wrong. The only ones that proved a slight problem were the white gloves. I'm assuming that their masks make them take slightly less damage from headshots, as I would need two of them to take them down. I mean, the solution to that is incredibly simple, quickly just fire two shots, or use vats for two back to back headshots, assuming the percent to hit is high enough. For good measure, and levels, I went into the basement and saved Ted for his father as well. Not that anyone was going to stop me, mind you. With the casinos out of the picture, all that leaves is house when it comes to my to-do hit list on the strip. As mentioned in the beginning, taking out the Securitrons is going to be nigh impossible from stealth with what I have right now. Fortunately, I do have the Platinum Chip from Benny, so I can just activate the terminal and open the secret door. Sure, they will attack me, but it's for, what, all of 5 seconds before I take the lift down to the man himself. When activating the pod, the safe option would be just to leave him, but I noticed that while the animation was playing out, he was not aware of me, so I just used that time to insta-kill him with one well-placed crit. I am now the master of this strip, that'll sound bad out of the context, and promptly send Yes Man over to the Lucky 38 to await my arrival, as for right now, well I'm off to Nellis. Luck would have it, I went back to check the gun runners before heading off, and wouldn't you know, now they have the silencer, and I know just who to test it on. Also, yes, I went and paid for steroids to make sure I could fire it properly. Because some people might ask why not, I made sure to grab the Abilene Kid BB gun. It's a pretty great stealth weapon, but having already dedicated two runs to the thing, I have no real desire to touch it again for what it's worth. Sneaking into Nellis was actually rather simple. I of course still nearly get my legs blown off from my person, but the stim packs I grabbed from those followers was more than enough for me to survive the journey to this house. As this is a safe zone, I took the time to use a doctor's bag on myself, and then as soon as there was a gap in the airstrikes, I came out, activated that turbo I picked up earlier, and was able to make it close enough to the gate to have them stop firing. Alright, so I would help out the boomers today, but you see, that requires me to go into the lake to retrieve the bomber, and if I'm swimming, I'm technically not sneaking, so that would fail the run, and means I cannot finish their questline. I could just leave, as I have now met them, and that's all you require for Yes Man, but that always feels like leaving a job half finished, so instead I use the anti-material rifle on Pearl while her back is turned, and then I go and put Loyal out of his misery, while he is also distracted by a very particular part of his shack. With their two leaders wiped out, the boomers are finished, because I guess they don't believe in appointing someone else like Jack or Raquel to lead. All that left was the Brotherhood of Steel and the Great Cans. Truth be told, I flipped a coin off camera to decide who was going to be next, and today fate decided to spare the cans for just a little bit longer. It also kind of gave the Brotherhood another day as well, as while I was passing through Sloan, I figured that with the anti-material rifle in my possession, that I could reasonably clear out the death claws in Quarry Junction. Long story short, I was correct. The rifle messes up a death claws day most of the time, let alone without a guaranteed sneak attack critical. As for the mother and father, well, same strategy really, except just with a little extra boom in my bullet. Alright, now for the tin can terrors. Honestly, they aren't all that tough, although I wasn't able to go about this how I initially wanted. Of course, they collar me on sight, and it should come as no surprise how I dealt with Dobson. The problem was when I entered the base. For whatever reason, any time I took out any member of the Brotherhood, whether they were named or not, and whether it was with the anti-material rifle or something quieter, it always alerted the entire base, making it nigh impossible to sneak past and deal with the rest of them. 
It's a little disappointing that I will need to take them out with the key cards instead, which I could of course steal with no issues due to my max points and sneak. However, I still need to blow up the base while hidden, or at least in caution. As, after all, I said I can only attack in those states, and blowing up an entire bunker full of people feels like a pretty big attack. So, here's what I did. In the computer room with the virus, I took out this single scribe who was blocking what would be my exit. This again made everyone hostile, but I made sure to do it late at night so that a good portion of the people would be asleep. I carefully crept from here into head scribe Taggart's room and dealt with him while he was waking up. I picked up the Mr. Sandman perk a while ago in hopes I'd get to use it, unfortunately the opportunity never presented itself. Well with him dead I now have a scribe disguise so I grabbed it and then made sure to activate the self destruct before putting it on so it wouldn't blow my cover. Obviously some people, mainly Ramos potentially waiting by the exit could see through my disguise so that's why as an extra layer of protection I finally used the stealth boy that I got off of Joe Cobb all the way back at the beginning. This plan ends up working flawlessly and I can casually sneak my way out of the base while the rest of the Brotherhood don't react in the slightest to the blaring warning siren. All that leaves is the Great Cans. I could go west from Vegas and through the Fiends, but instead I just continue to make the most out of my build and head north from Good Springs and just take out the Cazadors with normal and explosive rounds before they saw me. The best part of the explosive rounds is not the damage, but the fact they actually allow inaccurate people like myself to hit things. There's no point spending too long on the cans to be honest, as I'm not even sure they were aware I was even there. I snuck into their longhouse, and from the safety of their kitchen, proceeded to one-shot headshot all of them with the varmint rifle. I knew it was a good stealth weapon, but I never knew it was this good. For reference, I'm playing on normal, and I honestly expected its damage to fall off way before now. I guess I really did just underestimate it. For the handful of cans left in the valley, I just used the anti-material rifle, simply because they were outside of the varmint rifle's effective range. As soon as I got the message saying the cans were wiped out, I began heading for Cottonwood Cove. For no reason other than testing the limits of the varmint rifle, I then also proceeded to kill everyone at the cove except for the designated driver. Shockingly, even taking out some of the important named NPCs doesn't seem to alert the rest of the Legion, so that's nice. I don't immediately start shooting when I get to the fort, although we can chalk that one up to them only leaving me with a 22 pistol. While it was a lifesaver in the beginning, it has become pointless now that I have my other suppressed weapons. I speak with Caesar and agree to head down into the bunker, unbeknownst to him, to activate my robot military force. The only issue down here was the first protectron you see, as he seems to be alerted to you no matter what once you walk close to the first door. Well, fortunately they have stubby little legs, and as such I can back up and out of the way and evade him until he stops searching. Once he turns to go back to his starting position, I deal with him like I have so many others. The rest of the turrets and protectrons are easy enough to sneak up on, so I activate the army and then return to Caesar. This is where I can enact my master plan. As I have dealt with House, the Boomers, the White Gloves and the Brotherhood, I have technically completed all of Caesar's missions up until his brain tumor debacle. I agree to help him when the time comes, and purposely kill him on the operating table. I made sure to have my speech high enough to then survive the encounter with Lucius, doing so allows me to then go and assassinate Kimball. Kato gives me another NCR disguise to sneak past everyone, which is very welcome, but it doesn't go according to plan. The plan in question was to assume the position of the NCR sniper, and then just take the president out with a varmint rifle. However, for some reason everybody got alerted the instant he touched down, and before I knew it he was back aboard the vertebrate. Luckily for me, I just so happen to have something that works wonders at destroying vehicles. It takes a few shots and he very nearly gets away, but I am just about able to get in the final shot and destroy the vertebrate with Kimball on board and successfully complete the quest. You may think I am now about to storm the dam for the Legion, but you would be wrong. Yes Man is still waiting for me back at the Lucky 38, and I have also completed all of his prerequisites for the final battle outside of visiting the substation, which of course takes all of two seconds thanks to me marking it on the map earlier. My plan all along was to take out all the leaders of each major faction. The Chairman, the White Gloves, the Omerdas, Pearl, Loyal, Papa Khan, the entire Brotherhood chapter, Caesar and now Kimball. All that was left was Legat Lanius and General Oliver. You can think of this like a potential practice run for an inevitable Can You Beat Fallout New Vegas as HM47 video. Something that has been requested a lot, I might add. Anyway, it's time for the dam and it's ridiculously easy. I make sure to go in with my NCR disguise equipped for the entire section of me crossing the outside and through the interior sections of the dam. Funny enough, the NCR aren't best pleased with my prior actions. This also means they will have the Legion's main focus while I can snipe any stragglers from a distance. 
That goes for any NCR Rangers as well, as they will essentially sniff out my ploy if I get too close. The two heavy troopers inside fall for the trick thankfully, and I can just persuade them to leave, so I can then install smiles into the mainframe. The NCR troopers continue to deal with a handful of legion inside, while I then divert the power right under their noses. Back out on top, and now it's time for the Securitrons to act as bait. This is where the explosive rounds really come in clutch, as I can use them to take out the legion units that spawn in in groups of four. One shot is enough to take them all out, even if it's not a direct hit. My slow speed also makes it so the Securitrons have more than enough time to clear out the legion that are guarding the way to the Legate's camp. Before entering the camp though, it's time for another costume change, as now I must switch it up to a legion outfit. It probably wasn't needed in all honesty, but it gives me just a little bit of extra breathing room, as I find a good sniping position to take out the guards in and around the camp. The one outside is dealt with first, followed by the two in the watchtowers with carbines. Next was the guard waiting by the ramp up to the legate, and then finally, the two that ambush you from the side in the camping area, who are both dealt with in one sneaky explosion. The legate and his two guards were all that remained, so I dosed myself up with some psycho to make sure I got this first try. I knew that taking out his two guards would be a very bad idea as it will make the legate hostile, so he would have to die first. From past experiences, I know that one sneak attack with the anti-material rifle's armor piercing round, along with the psycho boosted damage, will be more than enough to one shot the legate, leaving only the final two Praetorians. The Securitron that followed me in gets their attention, while I fall back to drop down from the danger status. It only takes a few seconds for that to happen, and as soon as it does, I push back up to get a clear shot at them. My robot ended up coming back down and standing in front of me during this, causing him to get destroyed by the shot that was meant for them. Ah well, easy come easy go, I heal myself up, and as soon as I see one of them poke their heads out, I promptly take it off, along with the rest of their limbs. After a few seconds, the quest updates, informing me all that's left to do is deal with the NCR. There is no way to fight General Oliver, as he is standing right in front of you when the battle begins, so I have two options. Option one is I just let the Securitrons deal with them while I back off and hide. Or, option two... <laughs> Clearly, you always go for option 2 when it's available. With that, we have saved the city, finishing the game, and proving yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas while hidden, while sneaking, from stealth. I I'm sure I'll figure out a better title by the time the video goes up. Well, that was honestly really enjoyable. Honestly, didn't take as long as I thought it would, what with me basically crawling everywhere. It would have been even faster and smoother if I just remembered about that damn rat slayer. Oh well, maybe it'll get its own short video down the line as a joke, who knows. Regardless, that's going to be the next challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving a video a like. If you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe to our videos every week. My name's Norbert, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video.